Lymph node, H and E staining. A lymph node has a characteristic bean shape, a convex side and an opposing concave side, or a hilum. The analyzed histological specimen is H and E stained. The lymph node is surrounded by a connective tissue capsule, which penetrates into the organ in the form of trabeculae, introducing blood vessels and providing a scaffold for its parenchyma. Let's try to find a vessel within the trabecula. A vein with characteristic non-well-developed tunica media is visible. The trabeculae reach the deeper areas of the organ, where cross-sections through their small fragments may be seen. In the outer regions of the organ, the trabeculae form niches. The nodal stroma is composed of reticular connective tissue. The analyzed specimen has been stained with H and E. Therefore, the identification of cells and fibers of the reticular connective tissue is not possible. This tissue can be visualized with the silver method. It is not without reason that the connective tissue fibers are referred to as silver absorbent. The nodal parenchyma is differentiated into a peripheral cortex and a centrally located core. Deep cortex, also known as the diffusive cortex of the lymph node, rests between these layers. Let's take a closer look at the cortical niches in the lymph node. Spherical cross-sectional structures are visible in their area. Secondary absorbent lymph follicles. These structures vary in staining intensity. The central part of the absorbent follicles, called the germinal center, is lighter compared to the peripheral, darker, thick band. This dual stainability is a characteristic feature that allows the distinction of secondary follicles from the uniformly stained primary follicles. The presence of follicles in the cortex determines the definition of this area as the thymus-independent lymphatic zone. The diffuse cortex is an irregular cross-sectional area characterized by a uniform intense color resulting from densely packed multiple T cells residing in this area. The diffuse cortex is therefore a thymus-dependent zone of the lymph node. It has long been known that endothelial cells have receptors for lymphocytes, which enables recruitment and penetration of these cells into the node. Interestingly, research conducted at the Department of Histology in Wrocław and Poznań has shown that the endothelial cells of postcapillary venules, apart from the expression of proteins such as CD34, also express proteins typical for the vascular endothelium, such as the LYVE1 receptor. The following structures can be observed in the area of the lymph node core. Intensely stained medullary cords, wide medullary sinuses, and connective tissue trabeculae. Medullary cords are rich in cells, including B cells, plasma cells, macrophages, and dendritic cells. We should move on to the outer layer of the lymph node to discuss the medullary sinuses. This is where the flow of lymph through the organ begins. The lymph flows into the lymph node through afferent lymphatic vessels that open into the first of the sinuses, the marginal sinus. From the marginal sinus, the lymph flows into the intermediate sinuses, also known as peritrabecular sinuses, which are located in the immediate vicinity of the trabeculae. From here, the lymph enters the sinuses of nodal core. The network of interconnected channels of medullary sinuses runs the draining lymphatic vessels in the nodal recess. In this way, the labyrinth formed by the nodal sinuses and the accompanying cells capable of binding, presenting and neutralizing antigens is one of the most effective filters in the human body.